Today's lecture is over 3.7, independency, and then trees and genetics. So we're going to actually use tree diagrams in this section quite a bit. So in the past, tree diagrams had been too beneficial, but now we're really going to see how they're beneficial for the effects of independency and the product rule on finding probabilities of multiple things happening. And then we're going to also go over the difference between dependent and independent events. So to get started, a dependent and an independent event. Dependent means the probability of E happening given F happened is not the same as the probability of E. So knowing F does not affect the probability of E. Independent events this here. Independent events would be the probability of E given F is the same as the probability of E. So knowing F does not affect E's probability. So independence, two events are independence. The probability of E happen, meaning given F has happened, will be the same as the probability of E happening. Now a dependent event a dependent event will be if you know the probability if you know that F has happened that affects the probability of E it's not the same as just the probability of E so this does affect the probability of E so if you think of in the PowerPoint it talks about redheaded people people that have red hair tend to have more freckles so if you know the person or have freckles more often, so if you know the person's red-headed, the probability they have freckles goes up. Versus if I pick anyone at random, what's the probability they'll have freckles? So here, this these are dependent. Red hair and freckles are dependent. Because if you have red hair that or freckles, they depend on each other. Where um, maybe a woman and a doctor wouldn't would be independent. It doesn't matter. There's just because you know someone is a woman doesn't mean that they're a doctor. Or just because you know someone's a doctor doesn't mean that they're they're a woman. So these are independent events. They have nothing to do with each other. So hopefully I don't confuse you with those two examples. Product rule and independent events. So the product rule for independent events, we're gonna focus on them being independent. And it turns out the probability of A and B happening is the probability of A given B times the probability of B. And we've kind of seen before, calculating this can be a little bit difficult. If they're independent, it's straightforward because the probability of A given B is the same as the probability of A for independent, right? Independent events, our life is easier. If one, if the probability of something happen is independent of the other thing happening, you just take the probability of A times the probability of B. It gets interesting when we do um, dependent events, and you you want to roll, you want to draw a tree diagram for that. So if we look at this example. We have a pair of dice tossed. So my first roll has no effect on my second roll. The probability of getting a seven is one sixth for my first roll. If I pick the dice up again, the probability of rolling a seven again is a six. So the probability of getting two sevens, so this would be the probability of getting a seven the first time and a seven the second time, so two sevens in a row, is going to be one six times one six. The dice rolls are independent of each other. So this would be the probability of getting a seven times the probability of getting a seven which would be 1 out of 36. Trees in medicine and genetics. So I'll do some examples of this from the homework. But you'll have two problems from the homework with hair color. Now there's a lot to do with hair color. There's the melon factor. So you get one from your your mom and you get one from your dad and so you might have to end up doing a Punnett square to find all possible different colors for any offspring if your if your mother is this 
gen genetic makeup and your father's this genetic makeup. You do a tree diagram to find all possibility for their children. And then there's also the pigment factor, the red pigment factor. So you can have the genes R minus, R minus, R plus, R minus, or R plus, and R plus. And this has to do with the red tint of your hair. So if you have this genetic makeup and you have blonde hair and you have R minus, R minus, you have specifically blonde hair. But if you have this genetic makeup and you have R plus, R minus, you have strawberry blonde hair. And then if you have this genetic makeup and you have R plus, R plus, you have bright red hair. So you can see the all possible outcomes here. There's um, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There's 15 outcomes for five different colors. There's five different colors and three different red pigments, so a total of 15 different outcomes. So this example is in your PowerPoint. The Rosses are going to have a child. Mr. Ross has blonde hair and Mrs. Ross has reddish brown hair. Find their child's possible hair colors. So if we go to the chart, blonde hair, so we're in this factor, so that is M B D M B D with a R minus R minus factor. Mrs. Ross has reddish brown hair. So reddish brown hair is here. So her genetic code would be M B D M B W and her pigment factors would be R plus R minus. So then you make a Punnett square. So you put the mother's or the father's genetic code here. So here this is M B D M B D. So this is Mr. Ross. And over here we have M B D M B W. So this is Mrs. Ross. makeup. So then I cross product them in the Punnett square. So MBD comes here. This MBD comes from here. This MBD here. This MBD here, right? And then I have MBD from above and MBW from the mother. MBD from the father and MBW for the mother. And then the pigment factor, the red pigment factor, Mr. Ross, so this is Mr. Ross here, he's R minus, R minus. Mrs. Ross, so I'm going to keep them circled, R minus, R minus. Mrs. Ross is R minus, R plus. So you can see the R minus becomes from Mrs. Ross and the Sorry, R plus comes from Mrs. Ross and the R minus comes from Mr. Ross. Or the R plus coming from Mrs. Ross, the R minus coming from Mr. Ross. The R minus coming from Mrs. Ross and the R minus coming from Mr. Ross. And then here, R minus, R minus. So from this information, we can always put them into a tree diagram. And so I put it here. The outcome is either MBD, MBD, right? So that happened. See, let's highlight this. It happens one, two times out of four. So the probability of getting MBD is two out of four. Two out of four, which is the same as one half. And the probability of getting MBD, MBW happens two out of four times, which is one half. So if I go this is blonde hair and this is brown hair. So Mr. Ross has blonde hair, Mrs. Ross has reddish brown hair. They're going to either have a blonde kid or a brown hair kid. So I do the probability there. Now I have to look at my factors. And I have an R plus minus, R plus minus. That happens twice out of four. So the R plus minus happens out one out of two times or two out of four times and then the R minus minus happens one out of two times so 
If the child has blonde hair, it has a half chance of having blonde hair, and then from that it has a half a chance of having the pigment R plus R minus, and a half a chance having the pigment R minus R minus. The same thing down here with brown hair. So if I multiply these out, I have a, the probability, my, the offspring has strawberry blonde hair, blonde hair, reddish brown hair, or light brown hair is a fourth of the time. So they could have strawberry blonde hair, blonde hair, reddish brown hair, or light brown hair. The probability of each color is a fourth. Notice that there is a 50% probability that the child will have hair color different from that of either parent. So there's two of these on your homework, and I'm going to do one um, later on in the lecture. But I want you to know these take a while, and they take quite a bit of paper, and it takes a long, it, it takes a while to set up your Punnett square to get your outcomes and your red pigment. And they might not be equal. So here I have a half and a half, and everything ended up being a half multiplied through, and I got four choices. If I have more choices in here, my tree diagram is going to get larger. So let's look at some examples from the homework. Use probabilities rather than your own personal experience to answer the following questions. If a dice is rolled once, E is the event of getting a 4, and F is the event of an odd number. Determine whether E and F are independent. So you're rolling the dice once. So if you come up to independent in the notes, we will call independent the probability of E given F is the same as the probability of E. So the probability of E given F is the same as the probability of E for independent events. So if I know F has happened, so the probability of E given F, F is getting an odd number. If I know I got an odd number, what's the probability of getting a 4? Well, that'd be 0, right? The probability of 4, given the number is odd, is 0. Does that equal the probability of just getting a 4? Probability of getting a 4 is 1 6. 0 does not equal 1 6. Therefore, these are not independent. So your answer here is no. They are not independent. They depend on each other. If I know I got an odd number, then I know it's impossible to roll a 4. So I know the probability of a 4 is 0 versus if I tell you nothing about the roll. Determine whether E and F are mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive means they both can't happen. And it turns out I can't roll a 4 and an odd number. So they are mutually exclusive. Interpret your answers to part A and part B. Knowing the number is odd changes the probability of a 4. You cannot both get a 4 and an odd number. So hopefully that kind of helps answer um, these two questions. Determine what effects salespeople have on a purchase. The department store polled 700 shoppers as to whether or not they made a purchase or whether or not they were pleased with the service. Of those who made purchases, 125 were happy with the service and 111 were not. Of those who made no purchases, 148 were happy with the service and 316 were not. So the probability they're happy given they made a purchase. Let's do this. The probability the people are happy given they made a purchase. So how many happy people? So 125 were happy. Um, so we need to find how many people made a purchase. So 125 over 125 plus 11. Oh, sorry, 111. So, are the events being happy with the service and making a purchase independent? So, what's the probability they're happy given they make a purchase? And what's the probability that they're just happy? So, the probability they're happy, 125 of them are happy, 
and 148 of them were happy over the 700 choppers pulled. So if I get my calculator out, I do 125 over 125 plus 111. So 52.97. So this is 52.97 percent and 125 plus 148 divided by 700 is 39 percent. These two not do not equal each other. They do not equal each other. So are they independent? No. If they're independent, we come back up here. Independency means that the conditional probability equals the true probability. So the probability they're happy is a lot less than the probability they're happy given they make the purchase. Being happy with service increases the probability of making a purchase. Being happy with the service does not change the probability of making a purchase. Being happy with the service decreases the probability of making a purchase. So what can you conclude here? That being happy with the service increases the probability of making a purchase. So given you made a purchase, oh, I'm sorry, let me go back here. Being happy with the service decreases the probability of making a purchase. Sorry. Being happy with the service increases the probability of making a purchase. The Venn diagram in the figure below contains the results of a survey. So this is a totally different question. Event A is uses IPAN toothpaste and event B has good dental checkups. So are the events independent? So remember for the events to be independent, the probability of A given B would have to be the same as just the probability of A. So what's the probability of A given B? Probability of A given B has happened would be 219 over, oh sorry, the probability of A happening. So we're asked, are they independent? So I need to find the probability of A given B and compare that to the probability of A. So the probability of A given B would be 219 divided by 219 219 divided by 219 plus 51 so I take the probability of A so the number of elements in the A circle that are also in the B circle divided by the total number of elements in the B circle equals the probability of A which would be 328 plus 219 over the total, which would be 328 plus 219 plus 51 plus 189. So if I pull up my calculator and I do this math, I have 219 divided by 219 plus 51. So I get about 81%. This is 81% versus the math over here, which would be 328 plus 219 divided by 328 plus 219 plus 51 plus 189, which would be 69.5%. So let's just say 70%. Obviously, they're not the same. So are they independent? No. Use are the events that they use toothpaste and they have good good dental checkups mutually exclusive? No. The reason why is because they can both happen. 
and that happens in this area right here. So they're not mutually exclusive because someone they can happen at the same time. Mutually exclusive means they both cannot happen at the same time. But clearly here, 219 people used the toothpaste and had good dental um, checkups. So interpreting the results, since this number is greater, it says using the toothpaste is decreases, increases, or not affecting the probability of a good dental checkup. Um, so like I said before, since this number is greater than this number, then your correct answer is the increasing. It increases the probability that you're going to have a good dental checkup because if you know you will use this toothpaste, 81% of people that use this toothpaste have a good dental checkup. Only 70% of people in general have a good dental checkup. So using this toothpaste increases your probability of having a good dental checkup. There are some genetics in this section and don't be intimidated by it because it, you have to use a Punnett square and then a tree diagram and then multiply these numbers to end up with a probability. So albinoism is a recessive disorder that blocks the normal production of pigment. A typical albino has white hair, white skin, and pink eyes and is visually impaired. Mr. Jones is an albino. So we know it's a recessive disorder so he has to carry both traits for albinoism. So we're going to say little a, little a. If you have little a, little a, you have albinoism. Mrs. Jones is normally pigmented, so she does not have albinoism, but her brother is an albino, so she could carry it. So she could be big A, little a, or, or big A, big A, where she doesn't carry it. Neither one of Mrs. Jones' parents is an albino, so that you know her parents are big A, little a, because they, both of them are big A, little a, because they had a child that had albinoism and it's a recessive disorder. Find the probability that Mrs. Jones' child, Mrs., find the probability Mrs. Jones' child will not be in an albino, but will be a carrier. So this is kind of a lot of work. We know Mr. Jones is AA, because he's an albino, but I don't know if Mrs. Jones is big A, little a, or big A, big A. So I have to go to her parents. So this is Mrs. Jones's parents. So if I do their Punnett square, I have big A, big A, um, oh, I did that wrong. Sorry, A here. So I have big A, big A, big A, little a, big A, little a, little a, little a. We know Mrs. Obino, or Mrs. Jones is not an albino, so this cannot, this can't be her genetic code. So she has a probability of one out of three that she's big A, big A, and one, sorry, two out of three that she is big A, little a. So Mrs. Jones herself is unknown. This is going to happen a third of the time. This is going to happen two thirds of her time. However, her husband is little a, little a. So if she's big A, big A, then they can only have offspring as big A, little a. So big A, little a, or little a, little a. This is going to happen 0% of the time. This is going to happen 1% of the time. But however, if Mrs. Jones is big A, little a, should have big A, little a, little a, little a, big A, little a, little a, little a. So she has a half a chance of having an albino child and a half a chance of having a normal child, right? So if I multiply these, this is one third, this is zero, this is two six, and this is two six.
these should add up to one and they do. And I want to know what's the probability that the child will be a carrier. So I wouldn't talk about this probability because they have it. So it would be 2, 6 plus 1 third. So that's 2, 6 plus 1 third. So that's 2, 6 plus 2, 6. So that would be 4, 6 or 2 thirds. The last one in this section I'm going to go over is the hair problem. You have two of them like this on the homework. So the Eastwoods are going to have a child. She has chestnut hair and he has dark brown hair. So dark brown hair, that's M B W M B K. So M B W M B K. And that comes from the table down here. So dark brown hair. He has the R H factor R minus R minus. She has chestnut hair. So chestnut is here, that's R plus R minus. So that's R plus R minus. So we first do the Punnett square for the color. So M B D M B K cross with M B W. M B K. So we have M B W M B D M B W M B K M B K M B D and M B K M B K. So we have four different outcomes. So there's four different outcomes for color, four different for color. So now if I do it for the redness, I have R plus R minus, and then I have R minus R minus. So I have R minus R plus, R minus R minus, R plus, R minus, and R minus, R minus. So together that's two different outcomes, two different. outcomes. So we have R minus R plus happens a half the time and R minus R minus happens a half the time. But these are four different colors and they happen one-fourth of the time. So I'm gonna have MBW MBK a fourth of the time and then it's either gonna have R minus or R plus. So if I come down here, MBW, MBK, MBW, MBK, so that's this idea. The R plus, R plus, I don't have any in this column. So in this column, I have a fourth of the chance times a half of the chance, and a fourth of the chance times a half the chance. So I have an eighth, an eighth of the probability that they're going to have medium brown hair or chestnut brown hair. So medium brown to chestnut brown. So that's one eighth, this one eighth. It turns out they're all an eighth except for bright red. Bright red, there's a zero probability. Dark red, there's a zero probability. Auburn, there's a zero probability. Gloss, glossy, glassy, glossy. Dark brown, there's a zero probability. And glossy black, there's a zero probability because I don't have this R plus plus factor anywhere in my Punnett square. So a fourth time a half, each one of these are a fourth times a half. So you can see how that fills in. Everything else is going to be an eighth. So hope this helps. If you These questions are long, so don't get frustra frustrated. If you have any questions, let me know.